After our week in Montenegro, we departed from the southern port city of Bar by train heading to Serbia. Five hours into the journey, we exited Montenegrin customs at the border town of Bielio Polje. An hour later, we arrived at the Serbian border check in the town of Priyakolje, which is also a lumber town. Officially, a negative COVID PCR test was required, for which we stood in line two hours two days before, but we weren't asked for anything more than our passports. The next seven and a half hours were uneventful, with only occasional glimpses of scenery coming between trees and tunnels. Fortunately, we had befriended a Serbian fellow passenger who was happy to give us lots of useful information about Serbia and Belgrade. Dusk was approaching as we got closer to Belgrade and the land transitioned to flat farm country with fields and fields of corn and sunflowers. By sunset, we were on the outskirts of the suburbs and we arrived at the terminal station after dark. The train station was in the middle of a forested park, surrounded by residential areas two kilometers in all directions. There were minimal facilities, no way to change money, and no taxi stand. Uber doesn't operate in Serbia and there's no local equivalent. Two other passengers, including the woman we had befriended, were just as stranded as we were. But she was a lifesaver, as she called us a cab and sold us some local currency so we could get the remaining four kilometers to our flat. She called another cab for herself and the remaining passenger. Next time, we'll fly to Belgrade. Belgrade, Beograd in Serbian, straddles the confluence of the rivers Sava and Danube. The Danube is the second longest river in Europe and one of the great rivers in European history. It flows through or borders 10 countries and four capitals, including Belgrade. The Sava is a major river in the Balkans, connecting Slovenia, Croatia, and Bosnia and Herzegovina with Serbia. In addition to Belgrade, it flows through the capitals of Ljubljana and Zagreb. Zagreb was our very first stop in the Balkans back in June. Our Belgrade flat was right on a major street that connects the old city to New Belgrade across the Sava River. The apartment itself was very nice. A spacious fifth floor one bedroom with elevator access, all of which were very important for our first month long stay. The kitchen, bathroom and balcony were big enough with a clothes washer and plenty of room to hang laundry. Our first impressions of the neighborhood, however, were not great. Everything just felt dirty compared to the other places we'd visited, even Zagreb. Belgrade was reminiscent of Manhattan in the grimy years of the 1990s. Beograd means white city, and the more we explored, the more we did find to justify the name, even just a few blocks away. While most of the graffiti was ugly and sometimes hateful, beautifully artistic surprises were scattered around, including across from our balcony. The Sava riverfront was beautiful, with waterfront cafes and restaurants on both sides. Sunsets and nighttime lights could be pretty spectacular too. The heart of Old Town was just a few minutes walk away, with cafe and restaurant lined pedestrian streets. There were also plenty of boutique and mall shopping nearby. In terms of other nearby facilities and supplies, 
we had easy access to everything we needed. Bus and tram stops, community trash and recycling bins, and market and supermarket shopping were all nearby. One nearby landmark, the spire of the Archangel Michael Cathedral, that we could see from our balcony, was a beautiful and convenient reference point for navigation, especially at night. It was easy to tell from the riverside promenade how far we had to go home. Whether walking or biking, the Saba River Promenade was fantastic. Wide and clean with plenty of food and drink options, it's part of the 280 kilometer Saba cycling route and also where international Danube River cruise ships dock. One wonderful feature on the bridge nearest our flat is a cyclist lift that goes between bridge and water level so that it's easy to cross the river into Novi Beograd. Just south of our flat, spectacular but controversial due to its undisclosed taxpayer cost, the Belgrade Riverfront project is a marvel with an indoor mall and row of restaurants. Still very much under construction, it would be great to see the finished product one day. North of our flat, Passing more restaurants, you come to where the Saba merges into the Danube. Seeing the riverboats float by reminded us of our Budapest to Regensburg Danube cruise two summers ago. The promenade ends on the Danube in a residential area. The buildings are old looking, but it seems like a nice place to live. The Novak Tennis Center is also along the Danube. Founded by current world number one and Belgrade native son, Novak Djokovic. A memorial to the World War I defenders of Belgrade is next to the center. Between our flat and the Danube, the promenade is overlooked by the ancient Belgrade fortress, 125 meters above the river. It creates a fantastic double view with the river so this area was our favorite when we went out for dinner or drinks. Belgrade Fortress consists of Lower Town, or Water Town as it borders the two rivers, and Upper Town. The Upper Town Ridge has been inhabited for around 7,000 years. The first named city, Tsingdinium, was founded by a Celtic tribe in the 3rd century BCE as the Celts expanded from Central Europe along and across the Danube. Tingdinium was conquered by the Romans around 6 CE, who used the Overlook as a key north-looking defense point for the Danube. Over the centuries, the fortress was involved in 115 wars, razed to the ground 44 times, and changed hands at least 50 times, including 8 times in the 20th century. Most of what's seen today are rebuilt 18th century Austrian fortifications. The outer walls show the layers of time. Roman walls at the bottom, medieval Serbian in the middle, and Austrian at the top. Notable architectural exceptions include the 18th century Turkish Turbe tomb, the only remaining Turkish monument in the fortress and one of the few left in Belgrade. Another different structure is the 19th century Serbian army building now housing the Institute for the protection of cultural monuments. Also, the 15th century Despot's Gate, built by one of the most important historical Serbian leaders, Despot Stefan Lazarevic. Despot is a Byzantine title, equivalent to prince or duke, that was bestowed on him by the King of Hungary. The 19th century Byzantine Ruzika Little Rose Church is in the area of much older churches that may date back to the 12th century. The original relics of this church were relocated in the 16th century with the congregation to Constantinople, now Istanbul, 
and subsequently destroyed during the 1955 anti-Christian riots. The iconic statue Pobednik, the victor, by Croatian sculptor and Yugoslav nationalist Ivan Meštrovic, commemorates Serbia's 20th century military victories in the 1912 and 1913 Balkan Wars as well as the 1914-1918 First World War. The outcomes of those wars set much of the foundation for the future incarnations of Yugoslavia. The field of Kalimagdan, a national park since 1952, was leveled and cleared in the late 19th century. The expansive area is named for two Turkish words, Kale meaning fortress and Megdan meaning battlefield. The fort and park, open 24-7, get around 2 million annual visitors and have been a favorite local hangout during the COVID-19 pandemic. As for the rest of Stare Grad, the old city, it's definitely worth exploring on its own. It's very easy to get around, just about everything is within a 20 minute walk or less. It's also bike friendly and has the first puppy parking spot we've ever seen. If a lot of walking isn't for you, the tram number two route is the best that we found to access most places you'd want to go. Belgrade is the most culturally diverse city we've seen so far in the Balkans, reflected in the architecture, the people and the food. There are plenty of parks, and for hot days, as with all of the Balkan countries we've visited, there are plenty of attractive and safe public water fountains. We highly recommend the free tips up to the individual, group walking tours that begin every morning between 10 to 11 in Republic Square, the landmark that many locals just refer to as horse. Our tour went into a lot of depth in just a few hours, covering a lot of ground. The first spot was the Bohemian Scardalia neighborhood, known for its historic taverns. One of the oldest, Shishira, Three Hats, has excellent food. The tour also made several stops inside Kalimagdan and the Belgrade Fortress. Additionally, we went by the oldest and only remaining mosque in Belgrade, as well as our own landmark, Archangel Michael Cathedral. The guide also pointed out another historic tavern right across the street from the cathedral. The founder originally named it for the cathedral, which was a no-no with the church. Frustrated at finding another name, he settled simply on a question mark. The guide also pointed out a nearby three-story former indoor mall that is now the largest coffee house in southeastern Europe. South of Stari Grad, on the east bank of the Sava River, Ada Island is about four kilometers down the promenade. Easy to access by bus, but much easier to explore by bike. The North Tip has a lot of boats and houseboats. About 700 meters wide at the widest and over 5 kilometers long, most of the island is a popular recreational area with many activity options. Aside from the lengthy trails, there are tennis courts, playgrounds, and barbecue and picnic areas on the interior. The facilities are numerous. The 
where some are not as nice as others. The Saba flows through on the west side, but the east side has been blocked off as a dedicated swimming area with artificial beaches, two water skiing rigs, and numerous restaurants. Novigrad, the new city, is just across the Sava. Bars and restaurants line the river, some with a lot of character. The Danube Riverside also has many, and there's at least one house, one hostel, and one basketball court. There's also an indoor mall complete with a food court and a Lego store. Another large park borders the Sava and Danube with several kilometers of trails. In fact, there are bike trails and lanes throughout Novigrad, and you can take bikes on the ferry that connects with Ada Island. The area across from Ada is a small Chinatown with a shopping center and small grocery, along with a few Asian restaurants. The inland part of Novigrad is the oldest, settled since the Neolithic and Roman periods, but they were only part of the city since 1929. Most of the eastern part was swamped, only reclaimed after World War II. Adjacent to Novigrad, splitting the Danube, War Island was named because it has been used as an anchor point for both attacking and defending Belgrade for centuries. Today, it's a forested park that's connected to the mainland every summer by a pontoon bridge that's installed, maintained, and monitored by the Serbian military. Farther up the Danube and across from War Island, Zemun was a Celtic and Roman settlement separate from Belgrade until it was absorbed into the city in 1934. It has a slower vibe, a great waterfront with restaurants and cafes, and its own and better marketplace. Even some locals have told us the market was better. Zemun has a few notable buildings. The Church of Holy Father Nicholas has a delicate spire and beautiful interior. Gardosh Tower, on top of Gardosh Hill, a good climb up from the church, is an ornamental tower built in 1896 to commemorate 1,000 years of Hungarian settlement in the region. The remnants of walls are a reminder that it sits on a much older site where more significant fortifications once watched over the river and surrounding area. Farther inland, the Air Force Command Building, built in 1935, is still partially in use. The side that we walked by, however, is left as a kind of memorial to the damage and deaths caused in the 1999 NATO bombing of Belgrade, though the QR code curiously points to the English Wikipedia article. We hope that you enjoyed our first video from our month exploring Belgrade. If you did and want to see more from us, please help us out with the YouTube algorithm and hit like on the video, subscribe on our channel, and feel free to share. Fala vamos!